Hello world. I'm down at the Macaulay Salmon Hatchery in Juneau. This is Dolphin Doug. And I want to talk about salmon today. And I got to think about the right way to phrase the question. But it's October 15th. And you can look around. There's nobody here. The clouds are down. It's calm. It's a perfectly fine day to go whale watching. Because if I was, saw a whale out at the end of this channel, which I probably won't because it's... Uh, this is not whale country. There's no food in this water. But I could see it as far as my eye could see. I could see the blow hanging out there. That's what you need when you go whale watching. Now, are you going to go flying today? Probably not. This is a spot to come snag salmon or fish for salmon. There's no snagging from this dock, but you can snag from the shoreline. And this whole region is swarmed with tens of thousands of returning salmon. They come in. And if you can see the white waterfall over there, I'll zoom in a little bit. This isn't a salmon hatchery view, but you got a white waterfall and then there's a zigzag path going up to get the salmon into the hatchery itself. Alaska has five kinds of salmon. The other salmon you know of is Atlantic salmon. We don't grow any of those in Alaska. Our deal in Alaska is all of our fish, we call them wild. It doesn't mean they are wild. In that, and boy, this dock, a little bit slippery here. These are from the birds. You can see the barnacles on the pier here. At high tide, this whole beach is covered up to the rocks. So it's going to be up there somewhere tide comes and goes it's at a lower tide but this is not a low low tide they put the dock out this far for a reason because it can drop a lot farther but um, we call them wild salmon because they swim out in the open ocean on their own and then they come back to get born so um, however the limiting factor in Alaska we got lots and lots of salmon up here and what they realized is a limiting factor is not the food in the ocean, or at least it hadn't been historically, it was spawning sites because every salmon lives their life in the ocean and then comes into fresh water to spawn. <clears throat> Since there aren't that many freshwater rivers or lakes where they can spawn and all of those pretty much are, are saturated with fish and the reason they do that is because there are no very, very few predators in, in freshwater. Compared to the ocean, every freshwater stream and river is an absolute sterile desert. There's very little fish in there. And if you're a fisherman, you should know this. Those, those trout that are in those river waters, they have a much harder time finding enough food. Whereas if you're in the ocean, the problem is not finding the food, it's staying alive because something else wants to eat you. And so anyway, all of these salmon swim into freshwater Spawn, lay their eggs, fertilize them. The salmon, our Pacific salmon, all die. And then the eggs hatch out, and then they live a certain period of their life on the fresh water and the rest of in the ocean. So we call our salmon wild, even though we take in the salmon into hatcheries like this all around the state. And then we, we get the eggs, we fertilize them, and we raise them up to fingerlings. And then we raise them, these, this blue stuff in the front, these are probably um, uh, frames for net pens that we, during a certain period in their life when the fish are very, very small, we, and I'm not sure of the size there, but you get them exposed to a certain water. So the fish that they release from this uh, hatchery all want to come back to the stream and be born here, except they take other fish from this hatchery and take them to other places in the state and raise them in certain spots so they will be imprinted during that period of time of just a month or two, and then you can release them and they will come back to that spot. And the reason for that is because you just don't have enough spawning sites. Those have plenty of wild salmon coming back year after year, but you can raise things like here. This is not a salmon spot. This water, there's barely any opportunity for the fish before they built this facility to spawn and now they have millions of fish that come back um, the facility as i understand it is to a large part uh, uh done because they allow special harvest when the fish get close to the hatchery it's only those guys that can um, it's only the fish that these guys release that anybody's catching so 
I've got five kinds of salmon, and I'm gonna try something that I probably won't get right on the first try. And I'm just gonna do it once. It, it, uh, there's probably gonna be a gag reel, but I'm gonna have to read this. It's a song, and I just learned this today when I asked my, told my daughter I was gonna do a video on salmon. She just spontaneously sang this. And apparently, and we checked this with my second daughter to get the verbiage right. Apparently, this is what they teach kids in Alaska. Chinook is the king of the salmon. Coho's the bright silver one. Sockeye is red. Humpy's pink, so it's said. And the dog salmon's always a chum, a chum. The dog salmon's always a chum. Yes, I know. Thanks. <laughs> Try the veal. Um, five kinds of salmon. We're going to do this with fingers. I think this is a much better way of remembering it now that you've heard the song. Um, five kinds of salmon. And... Um, you can remember it with the fingers, but every Alaskan salmon has two different names. You heard them all in the song. So first we've got our thumb. Well, that rhymes with chum. So that's your dog salmon chum. That's one finger. Then you've got this pointy finger. You might poke yourself in the eye, sockeye. Got the biggest finger for the biggest fish. That's king salmon. You got a finger that might have a ring on it. That ring might be made of silver, silver salmon. And then you got your pinky, pink salmon. Now, dog salmon chum, Silver salmon, um, sorry, silver salmon, salmon uh, coho, king salmon chinook, sockeye red salmon, uh, uh, pink is humpback. Now, the key thing you need to know as a consumer, three of those are not, those salmon are not like the others. King salmon, sockeye salmon, and silver salmon can all be superb. It matters on how the fish was handled and the individual fish. Some fish just taste better than others. There's nothing wrong with pink salmon or chum salmon, but we don't eat those. Chum salmon and dog salmon have pretty bad, pretty bad name. Who wants to eat a dog salmon or a chum? I think they came up with a new word called kita. It's the same fish, but I don't eat kita. I don't eat dog salmon. I don't eat chum salmon. I don't, I've eaten pink salmon, and I thought it was maybe a sockeye, and I tried it. And I found out my cat doesn't like pink salmon, and I'm not arguing. The challenge is if you take one of those other kinds of fish, see, I'm assuming you don't eat a lot of salmon. You don't, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video. You're not a fishaholic that, that does this all the time. You're somebody that, you know, you're like my, my wife's Norwegian relatives. When they come over to Alaska, they buy beef, you know, steaks. I don't know, anyway, the, the point is that, that um, <clears throat> salmon, it is a little bit exotic to you and if you want to be an expert there's all sorts of websites i'm just giving you the skinny when you come to alaska you should eat any one of those three that you can get in top quality if you go to costco down south and they've got this stuff it really matters how they're handled as an example of that um and i guess i do get off track sometimes we'll see if i cut this story out or not but i do whale watching in juno i've got a business i've run it since 19 94 was my first season. And a couple of years ago, maybe it was a dozen years ago, probably at least that many, I took my crew down to Petersburg, a town, you know, 90 miles away from here. And we spent the night. And when we were there, I took them up to a restaurant. And it was a local restaurant. And we'd gone there in the peak of halibut season. And I'm not talking about halibut right now, but it's this beautiful Alaskan fish. And they were, we were watching them because we came in the boat. We were staying in the harbor. We were watching these fish coming into the processing plant. Petersburg is a huge fishing community. They could catch more fish. It's a much smaller community than Juno. They catch more fish. Anyway, we're watching these fresh halibut coming in. We go to this local restaurant that we, is way off the tourist track. And it's mostly a bar, but they serve food. And they have a special. It's halibut. So we're sitting there and I got the whole table and I'm, I'm having a great time and it goes around the table and people are saying halibut, 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 halibut. And my wife, of course, she ordered something that wasn't halibut, but it comes around to me, I'm the last guy, and I say, is it fresh? And they said, no, it's frozen. Now, this is 12 years ago and I've been here since 93, but I, my business, I've been running this whale watching business the whole time. I don't get much time off to think about these things. And halibut's stinking expensive. It's more than 20 bucks a pound. So I don't buy the stuff. Anyway, I say, all right, I'm going to try the halibut. And of course, it was last year's halibut. They were emptying out the freezers. And I'm sorry, 
It was barely edible. My wife was the smartest one at the table. And I knew what I should have known. I should have known not to buy it. Now, there is this magic called flash freezing. In some circumstances, some fisheries, they can catch the fish, clean them, and get them straight frozen right there where, when they're on the fishing boat. That is a magic ingredient. Fresh is always best, but fresh wears off after a week or so. And if you've got week old fish, fresh, fresh salmon, it's probably equivalent to this flash frozen. Flash frozen, you can't tell the difference. Now, if you get something that you caught today, it's got that little bit better zing, but you gotta be Alaskan to be able to eat salmon that way. Unless you're talking about Atlantic salmon. Again, I'm off on a tangent. Atlantic salmon is a wonderful fish, except it's all farmed. Wild Alaskan salmon, wild Atlantic salmon is fantastic stuff. Farm salmon isn't. Now, farm salmon is magical in one way. You can take a pound of fish food, throw it into a pen of farmed Atlantic salmon, and they do that in Chile, they do that in British Columbia, they do that in Norway, they do that on the eastern coasts of Canada, and anywhere they do that, if there's salmon, salmon stocks nearby, the salmons aren't doing well. Atlantic salmon and farmed salmon don't thrive. Now, I'm a, I'm a old, on occasion I drive a bus for my business, and I will tell, answer any question that anybody asks me on my bus, and you can't believe a bus driver because we're gonna answer it whether we know the answer or not. I'm pretty good at getting things right, but if you know a lot about Atlantic salmon, feel free to, to, to put in a rebuttal. You can contact me and I, maybe I need to pull this down. But as far as I know, this is kind of one of these things they all say, mm-mm, good. There's nothing wrong with Atlantic salmon. It's just a different critter. And if you know the difference between good fish and bad fish, the good fish, you can just put salt and pepper and oil and cook it on a grill or cook it on a pan or cook it in aluminum foil and you're gonna say, mm-mm, good. Salt and pepper and oil. And if it takes anything more than that to make it taste good, you're dealing with a fish that just, I don't eat that much. I tried this with sockeye salmon. I threw pistachios and I did this fancy restaurant. I can't remember what it was, but it's a recipe on what you do with, with salmon. I cooked it up just like they said. And again, I'm a Florida boy when I was born. That's why I, I'm Dolphin Doug maybe. But, but um, I didn't know what I was doing. I knew the fish was cooked right. I, I ate some of this and I scraped off all those pistachios and flavoring so I could get down to the fish. Sockeye salmon, all you need is salt and pepper to taste and oil to keep it from sticking to the pan, and you're good to go. Okay, king salmon, same thing. It's a different flavor. Some people like silver salmon the best. Some people like king salmon the best. I like sockeye. There is nobody in Alaska that I know that likes pink or chum or Atlantic salmon as good. There's nothing wrong with pink and chum. It's just not quite the same thing. Now back to your, your, your Atlantic salmon. They raise them in these fish, the, the farms. One of the advantages of Atlantic salmon is they can, it's fresh year round. That's a big deal. Fresh does make it better. Second advantage is they will harvest them at the size that you want so it makes a beautiful display on your plate. If you've got a 30 or 40 pound king salmon, the fillets are gonna look awkward to you. They taste just as good. And that makes a difference. For restaurants that like to present the exact same thing over and over again, Atlantic salmon work really well. It's only a true chef that's going to go to the trouble to try to make it work with a, with Pacific salmon that are bigger and smaller. So um, what's there's there's a uh, uh, it's it's fresh it's it's um, it's uh, it's it's um, one of the advantages of Alaska is we've got nice clean air, but it doesn't mean that our memory gets any better. Um, <clears throat> it's fresh. It's it's uh, it's it's uh, sized perfectly, and it's it's gonna be literally they will probably it's if you're getting that locally it's probably three days since it was in the pen if not less and it's cleaned perfectly very quickly i mean all that management in alaska those pink salmon it's the largest number of return is pink salmon it's not the most valuable fish but they will scoop them up in enormous nets and handle them massively those are the things they can and as long as they flavor it it's perfectly healthy and clean stuff I don't entirely trust anything that's gone through a processor as much as I do our wild salmon. If you're worried about mercury, salmon live a little bit longer. The king salmon might live seven years, but it's clean because they're not super long. It's long life that causes mercury to accumulate. So salmon's still clean there. You don't find concentrations. The Pacific Ocean is a ginormous place and the vast majority of it's clean. And around Alaska where our salmon congregate, there is no significant sources of pollution. So salmon, 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 good for you. It's got the omega oils in there that you need, etc. if that's what matters. So now we've got our five feet species of salmon, and I'm gonna to try to make sure I stick on everything I was supposed to talk about. Um, 
I'll go back to my story with the bus driver. I, there's another bus driver years ago when I was driving bus, and he told me a story. And he said, you know, we were talking about salmon, and, and somehow it came up. He said, one thing, the reason that dog salmon are called dog salmon is because you can't feed them to dogs. And I was like, he wouldn't be making that up. Somebody's going to catch him. Oh, my gosh. And I said, is that true? And he said, of course it's true. Everybody knows that. And I'd been in Juneau for 10 years, but I wasn't fishing that much. And it was just something that hadn't come across. It's like dog salmon. Can you eat dog salmon? Of course you can eat dog salmon, but you can't feed it to your dogs. I'm like... So it took me a little while. This is back before Google. And I had to figure this out, and then I figured out what it was. The reason you call them dog salmon... They, you can, dogs can eat them perfectly fine. I was thinking, oh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the, the bones... Nah, fish bones are fish bones, and you do have to worry about fish bones, but I've got dogs and I've got fish. They're just like any other fish bones. The deal is, when dog salmon come, they come up into the rivers. They're easy to find in huge numbers, and so you can catch those things. And up north, where they have permafrost, they will dig a huge pit down to the permafrost and then catch the fish and throw the whole thing into that fish. You don't have to kill it. You don't have to clean it. You throw the whole thing in there, and when you have a pile filled up with fish, you cover it up with a sod, and then you walk away. The dogs aren't going to touch that thing until wintertime, but the dogs are going to live on top of that pile of meat, digging their way down into the meat, and they will survive on that dog salmon all winter. Now, as a human, when you've got plenty of other kinds of salmon, you're going to want to eat them. If you are just subsisting on wild salmon, king salmon and sockeye salmon and almost as high silver salmon have more fat and we humans need more fat dogs need less so dog salmon is actually good for dog salmon rather than the other way around so this is that not just the omega fats it's it's how much protein you get versus fat humans need fat in their diet so up here you aim for the big ones and surprisingly since i'm a whale watching guy orcas that eat fish will hunt out king salmon in priority over virtually everything else. There can be a flood of salmon mixed going down through the Juan de Fuca Straits, and they will selectively pull out the few remaining uh, Washington State king salmon. It's really tough. Seals and sea lions, the same thing. Everybody loves that fattier fish, except for your dogs. All right, um, let's see. So pinks are the most common. Um, which is price wise pinks and chum are cheap whatever kita is I think that's dog salmon it's cheap relatively speaking the good ones are gonna cost you 20 bucks or more a pound at times and all I suggest and it took me easily 15 years before the lights went off in my head and and I had a little experience where I had a chance to taste test and I realized sockeye just got that little bit more ding ding flavor and so the whole thing with, uh, with, with salmon is um, you got to try some of this really good stuff to see if it's worth buying. And like I said, when I went to this restaurant, that was probably one of the first times that I'd eaten salmon. Sorry, at that time, it was, I mean, it, that restaurant was halibut. But halibut is 20 plus bucks a pound. And on a regular basis, it's worth eating. Now, I try to catch it on my own boat. And I spend a heck of a lot more than 20 bucks a pound to go catch it. Okay, I'm a fisherman, not a catcherman, and it's worth doing. Same with the good kinds of salmon, but I can catch all the pink salmon I want. I don't catch any of them. So there's that line, there's that line I, I cross. I catch sockeye salmon, I catch them with a net, and I can them. It's a wonderful thing to eat. First time I was doing it because, I, again, I'm a, I'm a local, I'm, I'm local, and I know people that kind of do this, but you got to be in the right place at the right time, and when you're processing salmon, you just, it's also my busy season, so it's kind of hard to time. But that canned salmon is just magnificent stuff because it's sockeye, and all I put in there is a, is a couple spoonsfuls of flavored salt and a little bit of oil to keep it going. <clears throat> all right. So um, it, another question people wonder about is, are, do we have enough salmon in Alaska? And the answer is yes. These hatcheries add more. Now, it's interesting, though, because as the hatcheries have gotten more and more ability to do this, Pink salmon runs come every other year. It's just the way it's been for a long time. I don't know if it's even years or odd years that are dramatically larger than the others, but they've started to see all the other salmon species, species having an inverse correlation, which says perhaps they have saturated the ocean food source. It doesn't mean there's a shortage of salmon, and it doesn't mean it's impacting the rest of the bio, 
ecosystem. Ecosystems are hard to manage. There are lots of issues. I mean, I'm a whale guy, and I look at it from the whale perspective. I've spent a lot of time thinking about that. I've got, I'm a biologist in background, and it's a complex thing. A huge advantage of Alaska is when they screwed up in other parts of the world, like they did on the Grand Banks off Canada with the cod, like they did in Norway, which now has no wild salmon left. We learned the lessons up here in Alaska because we came later, and so we were able to put in protection and save things. It doesn't mean that we've got everything figured out. Just this year, the snow crab return, and again, I'm not an expert fisherman, but I believe snow crab is another word for what we in Southeast eat that's called Dungeness crab. King crabs are big, snow crabs weigh about a pound each. Anyway, they just found out that a billion of these things disappeared this year. And normally they only harvest like 13 million of them. So they just canceled the whole snow, the snow crab season. It's like 10% of normal. And as far as I know, king sand crab have gone off, dropped off the edge too. I do not know why. I don't know what's going down there. As far as I know right now, nobody else does. But as far as, you know, the, the Alaskan management is they, have, they will shut down entire fisheries like that snow crab fisheries until they come back. For instance, in my waters around Juneau, I like shrimping but I have to go about 20 miles in one direction or another to get outside of the local region because for the last six, seven years that I've been shrimping, they haven't allowed shrimping in the Juneau district because there aren't any shrimp here. Nobody really has figured out why and I don't understand the whole story. And maybe somebody does know, but I don't. But anyway, they protect areas to try to bring things back so that we can all keep the resource. Anyway, um, yeah, it's expensive. You should buy it. You should try it. How it's handled really matters. If it says flash frozen, get it. If it's uh, fresh, obviously fresh means you really want it as fresh as it can be. It's hard to get the huge volumes of salmon that we catch here in Alaska fresh anywhere else. So, uh, you know, it just depends on how they manage it after that. Um, can you eat the salmon raw? Absolutely. I feed it to my dog all the time. It doesn't work. The, the problem is you know you can I'm sorry dogs really like salmon skin it just only goes down and stays down a little while maybe I shouldn't say that but don't feed your dog salmon skin the other thing is and again we're talking about dogs and I like dogs this place right here reeks of summer the smell of rotting salmon all of August into September when the fish are coming you don't want to bring your dog anywhere close to the beach when they're dead salmon on the beach that dog is going to put that salmon oil right where it belongs right on that dog's fur and you're going to have a stinky slimy mess it has happened over and over that's one issue with dogs in alaska i wasn't going to talk about that the other one is porcupines they're real and some dogs just don't get it unfortunately i've had several of those in my lifetime so i've rattled on long enough i hope you stay warm and dry and have extra tufts this is a typical October day. It could be just like this in the middle of summer. I'm cold. My fingers are getting a little bit cold. My truck says it was 43 degrees this morning. In the middle of summer, it'd be just like this in 50, and there'd be a flock of people here when the fish are here. But anyway, come here, enjoy, and I hope you love Alaska as much as I do when you see it.